intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. What broke him down? Was it just the body punching? punching. I was was hitting him with body punching. I heard him actually he was crying in there. You were saying that Big was crying when you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. Boxingboys.com. So that you knew you had him by that time. Absolutely, but I knew he was was cuffing and taking those punches. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another morning edition with the Boxing Voice Radio. I am your host, Nesta Gibbs, and we're going to be talking a little bit of Luis Ortiz. He is back in the news and should be scheduled to fighting November 7th. The two-time heavyweight world title challenger, Luis King Kong Ortiz, will be headlining the PBC Fox uh, card against a very unknown Alexander Flores, Alexander Flores. I know, I know. Look, he's coming off of a knockout loss. It's almost a year since he's fought. So, you know, he deserves an Alexander Flores. Who the fuck is that guy? Uh, He's got a 76% knockout ratio. You know, he's only been stopped by Charles Martin and somebody else. Uh, but look, it's not meant to be a test. It's meant to be what it is, you know, uh, a, a comeback fight. I think the pandemic has uh, held Luis Ortiz return up longer than what their team probably expected. And uh, now we're forced to get this type of a name, Alexander Flores. He is 18 fights uh, in the win column, 16 of those are by knockout. Two of those are a loss and one draw. So, look, Dave Allen, you know, what? How many rounds he lasted with, with, with Lewis Ortiz? You know, Christian Hammer. Uh, those guys are obviously on a different level compared to Flores. Flores, anytime that he stepped up, really, he's been put out. Um, but... He has his own power to speak of, right? He did knock out Mario Heredia. Now, we talk about Mario when we're we're talking about prospects, you know, um, facing Mario. Mario just lost to uh, Hergovic. He beat Samuel Peters in 2019. Um, But he's lost to all those up-and-comers, you know, the Dominican heavyweight George Aries I've been telling you guys about for two years. He's still haven't put him on TV. Uh, Jonathan Rice beat him twice. LeRon Mitchell from California. Andre Fedosov was, was in the Buxino tournament. So if you are good, you beat Mario. If you're not, you might get a draw. You might lose. Right? Uh, shout out to David Torres Garcia, who got a draw with Mario, right? Whereas Alexander knocked him out. Now, uh, again... Uh, Mario is just a journeyman there to put a test up for those up-and-coming prospects. We don't expect Mario to put too many, um, too much of a, uh, be too much of a threat for a top 15, even top 20 fighter, you know. Um, But it is a test. We were talking about that yesterday, you know, tests that these fighters are faced to get in. And, um... For certain fighters, Mario can be a test. Now, with the skill level of Luis Ortiz, no one is going to be extremely happy about this fight. You know what I mean? But, again, being knocked out twice to Deontay Wilder, and in November, it would be a year since he's been in the ring. This is probably worth it. Now, 
It could be argued that his sparring partners are 10 times better than Alexander Flores. But no, none of his sparring partners have knocked out the caliber of guy that Flores has been knocked out to. You know, in fact, Brazil, uh, Brazil is the one that knocked out Carlos Negron, who's one of the sparring partners. Cassius Cheney's undefeated, and he's one of the spawn partners. And then Jer- Jeremiah Milton, also one of the spawn partners, and he is undefeated. He's trained by Coach Larry Wade in terms of strength and conditioning, and his trainer trainer is Justin Gambler, the trainer of Caleb Plant. So I was very excited to see that Milton is in there with Luis Ortiz, and then even more excited to see that Milton is bigger than Luis Ortiz. So as he starts to, you know, develop in this heavyweight division, we might get some interesting fights out of him. He's in better physical condition if you're considering waist, stomach, six-pack than Luis Ortiz. He's taller than Luis Ortiz. May not be thicker, no homo. He may look a little more slim or slender athletic but very happy to see Jeremiah in that camp very happy to hear him being so humbled to be appreciative to get that work you know he spoke about how he used to watch YouTube videos of these guys now he's in their training camp and you know that's a dream come true those are small goals you know we all got goals but I think uh, a, a great method of achieving those goals are by having multiple small goals. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he wants to be a world champ, but getting in a camp with a former world champ or world champion caliber level fighter, that should be a goal for any up-and-coming heavyweight that wants to take this series. But looks like we got some co-hosts to rock out this morning. What's going on, Corpus Christi, Texas? It's me, Mario. What up? Nothing much, man. Just uh, sore as hell. Sore as hell. Yo, but Wars got I'm good, like, though. I'm good. Are you going to be okay every time you call? The talk now is always about being Bruh, sore. I don't, you know what it is? It's like we'll like try something different. Like For example, yesterday we went to the football field, and we did a bunch of like agility drills and stuff. And uh, yeah, my body was not ready for that. But um, it was good, though. You know, it was different. So, something it was fun too that was something different it was like you know got to try and it was cool it worked out but uh at least i'm not having to get work like you got in work with a real pro yesterday right omar Warren? No, no 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 that's on saturday saturday oh i was about to say oh you're trying to keep that secret yeah so it's, uh what do you know about alexander flores bro I don't know much. I know that you uh, that according to this, he's fighting uh, Luis Ortiz, which isn't even on, uh, which didn't even release. Uh, what's it called? A press release, but you know, all good, all good. Um, November seventh. That's coming up fast, man. That's like literally a month away. It's like the eighth today. So, um, but I guess you know, Luis Ortiz. He's been out for a while. Hopefully, he's been in shape. But, man, look at this roster of people that he's sparring with. Good Lord. I know. That's what I said. I said the sparring partners are better than the fighter. Than the Word. one he's going to fight. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to be overprepared. But that's a good thing. Maybe this is a soft touch yeah. to turn around into a big, maybe Andy Ruiz fight. I know Reynoso pulled him off of this year's fight. So that means that Ruiz's Areola opponent is available. Is Lewis getting a tune-up to go in there with Areola? Uh, while you think of that, I got a super chat from our pound-for-pound supporter, Andre Dakota. Surprise, Herman Calcido agrees to this fight. Knowing Ortiz's age, at this point, cash grab, I guess, for the camp? I, I, I mean, Maybe he meant champ, for the champ. 
But um, I don't know why you mean you're surprised that, that Herman agreed to this fight. It's a tune-up for his fighter coming off of two knockout yeah. losses like and a year layoff. Yeah, let's get the rust off, yo. We don't got nothing to prove. You know, everybody's seen you get in there twice with Raul Wilder. Some people had you beating the first Wilder fight to the knockout, if not the second fight to the knockout. So, like, he's on the brink. You know, is he getting older? Absolutely. But time and time again, we have sparring partners that come in like Cassius Cheney and Jeremiah Milton and tell us how great Ortiz is in that ring, how intelligent he is in that ring, and how tricky it is to be in there with this quote-unquote alleged 41-year-old heavyweight. Well, and, and the thing, too, is, like, if we continue to see Alexander Flores's, you know, for the remainder of the next couple of years, then, yeah, they're waiting to cash him out. But this is, like, up to par, especially with a guy that age. Like, uh, you know, Andre's uh, Super Chat, it, you know, it definitely hit on the fact that, you know, he is getting up there in age and he does need, you know, a, a legitimate fight. But when you're up there in that kind of age, you need these type of tune-ups, you know, like a Spence at his age and his prime, you know, with all of the greatness that comes with being in your, you know, in your prime, he doesn't have to take a, a you know, a tune-up after a horrific car crash. He can just go straight into Danny Garcia. Well, at least, you know, we hope, um, but with somebody as old as, uh, you know, Ortiz, you know, no hate, he needs these kind of fights. You know, he needs at least one of these, maybe even two. Who knows? Depending on how many rounds he gets out of this kid. But uh, yeah, you know, it, at least we're gonna see him back. That's the that's the good thing about this. And man, I'd love to see some of that sparring. That's that would be awesome. Yo, why why'd I say that? Like Fox to build this up should air the sparring because it's probably gonna be better, more high level than the fight. You know, Charles Martin knocked out. Uh, Alexander Flores and someone else knocked out Alexander Flores. Let me uh, double check. But, you know, he's only got two knockout losses, but they've come to Joseph Parker and, and Charles, Charles Martin. Martin. So it's just like, mm, can he really hang, you know? Um, and, and and who knows how, how long he'll be in there, you know? But looks like we got our Canadian co host What's going on, Francis? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mario, Nestor. What's happening? What, what up? up? What up? Is Canada jumping up and down for Luis Ortiz's return? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but for um, David Lemieux to come back. No, nah, and, even and, worse. And Lemieux's coming back though. Who he fighting? I know he is. I picked him nah. in the. I, picking I don't league. know who he's fighting, but yeah, I picked him in the picking league. He better not shit the bid. Yeah, great topic today, man. Uh, Luis Ortiz, the once quote unquote boogeyman of the heavyweight division, the fight, the fighter that nobody yo, wants to yo, fight. You be saying little slick shit that only I catch once quote unquote. So who's 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 really <laughs> who, who's sending him an offer? Why is no one like? Let's think about it. How many fights does Samuel Peters still get at this age? They send offers to any other old guy with a name so they could build up a new guy, but they don't do that for Ortiz. You can't say once feared. Not even not even prospects. Look, Guido and, and, and Sam Jones will never send Ortiz an offer. At 48, they ain't sent him an offer. Come on, man. Y'all bugging. I, I, I agree with Put you 100%. Put some respect on his name. Hold on. I, 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 <laughs> I agree with you 100%, but what you're forgetting is that because nobody wants to fight <laughs> because nobody wants to fight him that's what makes him uh the once quoted bo boogeyman because if you, if nobody wants to fight him so how can you be but that's, how can you be scared that's if you my haven't only issue, displayed you, you haven't displayed your boogeyman I'm skills just saying, listen, in a long time my only argument with you francis is that you're saying the once feared as if we've heard stories of him turning down offers uh, you know, like, yo, and let's not forget Alexander Povetkin was 41 and just smoked your man boots. <laughs> just saying. Come on, man. Come on. That was a lucky punch. That was a lucky punch. Let's keep it 100. A, pun that was a, a lucky punch, punch from the gods. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, this fight, okay, but this fight at the end of the day, I think um, while um, the White's fight is way better. Than what who Ortiz is fighting right now. Pavekin is definitely better than Alexander Flores. You know what I'm saying? And he debuted in 2019. You know, I mean, at least you get Olympic um, 
uh, Olympic gold medalist uh, at the heavyweight division in Alexander Povetkin. So, yo, this fight right here is a, is a decent fight. I guess it's a stay busy fight, kind of like the fight he had between his knockout losses to Deontay Wilder when he fought Travis Kaufman. It's kind of one. Of, I think this fight gonna be a little bit more competitive than the Travis Kaufman fight. Do you agree with me or disagree? Nah, man. This is a tune-up. Kaufman was more of a, a competitive fight. Yeah. Yeah, at least Kaufman had been in there with other fighters, and, you know, he's had experience. Um, I don't know who this kid is, to be honest with you. This guy's yeah, fought, I, like, I mean, he's two fought, people. He's only fought two people that we know. He ain't nobody serious. But, look, this whole card, at least, I think, look, we talked about the, the, the zone card uh, on, the, on November 7th and how that has a couple of heavyweights on it and how we were excited to see Jalal Zhang and whoever the other heavyweight is on the on the uh, chief support of the Devin Haney card. But this November 7th card gives that card a slight run for its money. Maybe that one has the bigger names. I'm not sure we could compare. That's what we do here, debate. But sources are saying the Premier Boxing Champions is also planning a triple header for this fight. It'll be obviously Luis Ortiz versus Alexander Flores, which we've been telling you what about. Then Frank Sanchez, who's trained by Eddie Reynoso, he'll be coming back versus uh, Brian Howard. For uh, Brian Howard, wow. for those people that don't know Brian Howard, Brian Howard is the guy that actually knocked out the guy Luis Ortiz is uh, sparring with. So, you know, I see people like, oh, who's Brian Howard? Well, get your fucking hardcore boxing card revoke give me that get the fuck out the chat you don't watch boxing nigga don't just got slept by this dude so what you mean who's that doesn't brian howard deserve a comeback if he knocks out a name shouldn't that be the natural order of fucking boxing or do you want more politics to put brian howard on the shelf even though he's the one that stopped carlos negron you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying about you fickle fucking boxing fans. You don't know when to be happy or when to be upset. Oh, and then who's very high and fuck out of here? Huh? Shut your ass up and learn something about the fucking sport and how shit should really go. So Brian Howard should upset. He should upset and it should be silenced, wiped from the internet. He shouldn't get a reward, Mario, for beating Negron. This is exactly what PBC should do. You beat one of our guys, come on down. Beat another one then. And now they're putting him in there with Frank Sanchez. You know, I don't get this. But I Bay could beat some dudes and get a fight with Guido and we fucking celebrate. You guys are fucking PBC haters. It's in your blood. We can see it, bro. As much as you try to say you're not, I can see it. We can celebrate eBay. eBay, oh, eBay, eBay. He came back three times versus fucking bums. Then he graduates to Guido. Everybody's clapping. But Brian Howard can't beat eBay. No, no, because he's with PBC and you a fucking hater. That's why. Yo. But fine, my other man's on the other card. In. No, if y'all don't want to talk, it's just, it's a good no, card. I, Mike I Polite mean, Coffee's on the undercard, and he's checking Joey your bell. That is a step up. That is a that is a name of with Tyson Fury. Uh, a spawn partner with Deontay Wilder. You check Joey Abel and how many people he's for. And Mike Polite Coffee at 6 and 0. My guy. My guy. Since 0 and 0 is stepping up. Okay? Just like uh, Babic. So when Babic stepped up and I jumped up and down, and in three fights he fought fucking winners, let's jump up and down. Let's jump up and down because Winters isn't on Tyson Fury's resume. Winters isn't in fucking Wilder's camp. Let's jump up and down. I want to see y'all have the same energy. Bunch of haters waking up this morning so mad. I was in a good mood till I seen your comments. Haters. Man, you let, you, you let that bring you way down. I'm just yeah. saying, bro. Like I, I don't understand why we shit on a sport we love. Every day you come to this channel to be mad at the sport. Like, go somewhere else. Positive mm. thoughts, man. Good energy. Snaps. Let's go. What you thinking about uh, my yeah. man stepping all the way up? That's right. That's right. Shout out to Mike Polite. Yeah, listen, Mike Polite, we've had, we've had him on. Uh, obviously, a friend of Ness's. Uh, and he deserves a shot. Um, kind of based off of what Ness was saying. But, uh, you know... He came on, and, and we know his story. His story is one that uh, really, I hope, gets told in this next um, card because it was such a, an amazing story. Um, you know, he came from the foster system, and 
And, uh, you know, he just struggled. And, and, and the way that he came about boxing, I mean, it was all by happen chance. You know what I mean? Like, it was all a happenstance in the sense that, you know, he decided to start boxing. And then he ends up meeting a trainer at, like, a Walgreens or something like that. After, you know, he's only got, like, two or three weeks left to prepare for the Golden Gloves. That his friend entered him in. And, like, it's just, like, this whole story that's really good and, 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 and really what the basis of, you know, boxing fans – you know, not come to expect, but but it, it's what drives us. You know, it's it's these types of stories that that shows like a long shot or an underdog. Uh, but that said, he looked good his last time out. So I'm expecting him to look uh, just as good this time. Yep, I'm rocking with everything y'all saying, man. Y'all are saying everything. There's nothing to add to it. 100 percent. He deserves a shot. Let's keep it moving. So, so Frank Sanchez is going to be taking on uh, Brian Howard, who knocked out Carlos Negron. Remember, Sanchez is trained by Eddie Reynoso. Eddie got now two heavyweights in the camp. Um, but is this a sidestep? I'm going to say it for you. I think it's a sidestep. Yeah, he beat Negron, but he just beat Joey DeVeco. So I was expecting to see more from Frank Sanchez now. I get that maybe Eddie's driving that car and he's like, no, Al, no, Sam. We were in a pandemic. You know, my guy wasn't in the gym every day. We need a tune-up. You know, we need something to kind of hit the reset button. Is this it? Because if not, this is a sidestep. This isn't Joey DeVeco or above. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, that last fight out with Joey, he won that 10-round unanimous decision. Uh, and he and he shut, it, he shut it out on two scorecards. You know, uh, two of the scorecards, he, he didn't lose a single round against Joey. Um, and, and this opponent, um, you know, just doesn't match up Brian Howard, like you said, even though he's coming off of a fairly respectable win. It's like Joey represented something a little different. So I was expecting that step up, but... I think that this is the correct move in a time where, you know, fans still aren't really allowed yet, you know, trying to find loopholes and at a time where boxing's back, but it's still not back, back, I guess, um, because they can't plan for those types of fights. So there is some money off the table. Um, This is, I think, the move right here. You know, just keep him busy, keep him active and, uh, you know, keep him getting some experience in, you know, keep him, uh, you know, ready, you know, he's only had 15 rounds, I'm sorry, 15 fights, you know, uh, 52 rounds fought, 11 KOs, um, but he has a lot of promise, a lot of promise, uh, you know, a lot of people were a little turned off by last time out, because he, he wasn't as flashy as his uh, nickname would suggest, the Cuban Flash, but, you know, he this, this is the right move still, <laughs> this is the right move. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of these fighters, man, you got to keep them busy so that you they keep their spirits up, especially during a time like, you know, the pandemic, um, even before giving them fights just to keep them up and going. But, yeah, he don't look 28 at all, according to his box tricks picker. I just wanted to. Oh, no, he's a, Cub- he's a Cuban 28. That's, that's, an American, that's an American 37. No, <laughs> so you definitely got to um, you definitely got to keep these guys busy. He had a you know, I mean, he got 10 rounds in with a with a decent uh, boxer slash sparring partner in Joey Duvego. Um, so yeah, man, just give him a good fight. This fight will be definitely good against, uh, Brian Howard. Brian Howard is coming off uh, a couple of good victories, a couple of good showings. So yeah, it should be fire fight. Will we see a knockout? That's the question. Uh, in, in the, in the Howard Sanchez fight, I don't know. The reason why I say that, cause you know what I'm saying? In 15 fights, he got 11 KOs. Yeah. Right. Word, he, word. He, has, he hasn't had a KO in like his last in his in his last four fights, but that's in terms of Sanchez. Yeah, I, I you know, I don't remember the the Sanchez uh DJ, uh Joey fight super well in my head. I do remember him playing it pretty safe. Um so I don't know. I don't know if we can expect a knockout. I think we should. Brian, but Brian Howard's a tough guy, you know. I don't know. He's forty though, so Brian Howard, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes, just because I'm I'm very impressed with Frank Sanchez. I think that he is the got a thing, lot of promise. So. The only thing you can say is that Frank I definitely hasn't touched, this. haven't tasted the canvas, and we know that um, 
uh, Brian mm. Howard has. Yes, twice. Good point. He's been knocked out twice in his three losses, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, it's showing that Sanchez got better chin, so to speak, so far in 11 fight in 15 fights. They both had 15 fights. Um, actually, no, sorry. Uh, what's his name? Howard has 18 fights, and he has 12 KOs in 18 fights versus 15, 11 KOs in 15 fights. Frank Sanchez. So I think it's going to end in a KO. If I had yo, to choose. Yo, looking at Sanchez. I hope you're right. And the fact that he started, uh, he got one fight in before the pandemic. Like, pandemic really hit March 16th. He was rocking out March 7th. So, I, I'm really not understanding this fight now. Like, he's not really in no pandemic bad shape. Like, he just fought in March, man. <laughs> like, why is he taking on Howard? Like, I get Howard deserving the opportunity coming off of the biggest win of his career in Carlos Negron. But, but 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 why are you giving it to this guy? Why is Frank taking this? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like a two birds with one stone type of thing. I, I don't know. It's it's a tough. He got a better promotional team. Is that what we're talking about? They were Could able be. to get him back out right away. And um, Brian Howard has been, you know what I'm saying, inactive for whatever reason may be. That's right, good. Of, you nailed uh, it. It's good of the team, man, of Fran Sanchez to just keep him busy, right? Get him in as much fights as possible, even with a pandemic happening. Word, word. No, I think you called it. I think you called it. I think that probably is what it is, or at least part of it. You know, it has to be. It has to be at least a part of it. But, um, yeah, this is like the Boxing Voice card it, it, on November 7th. Like, these are all guys that we've had on the show and, like, that we've talked about, you know, that haven't gotten as much coverage from everybody else. Um, <laughs> we've had some of these guys on, like, multiple times. Yeah. Even the sparring partners, so... Uh, this is like November seventh, like the TBV card. You can definitely root for all these guys because you know what I'm saying we got we got to know them a little bit. Oh shit! This is the same day as the Haney. It is, is it? right? November seventh, is it? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's all what right, they invent. Go. That's what they invented DVRs for. Yeah. Let's get to the callers. We got any super chats? Oh, man. Good question. Did we get I think any we... morning love? Is there any morning love? Yo, I ain't even had creamer oh. this morning. So somebody need the super yeah. chat. No creamer, bro. I looked at my girl like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> For real. <laughs> I bro. do that shit too. And then I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to just warm up some milk. You know what I'm saying? Throw it in the coffee. Old school status. Grandpa status. No milk. I'm like, no milk. I was about to go to the uh, Dunkin' Donuts in the road. Then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drink this black today. All right, so Mike Polite said he's down. Oh, he said you he's drink down for black the coffee. Get down. He said he's down for the get down. I'm going to send him the link and see could he get down. Um, so excited for him, man! I'm glad. So he coming? Well. He coming on right now? Yeah, I'm glad he's oh, okay. well, yo. Hopefully, right now. I said, yo, you available right now? Cause we trying to do it right now. Yeah, man. But uh, one of these cards got to get DVR. That's for sure. But it's they're all worth watching because. Uh, who else outside of Jalal Jay's on that Devin Haney card? There's another heavyweight on there. Yeah, there's a, co a couple decent little fights. You got uh, Philip Hergovich oh, against yes. Rydell Booker on that yes. card. Yes. And then Zhao Zhang versus Devin Vargas. I'm going to get them too. They said, yeah, I'm going to have Sean George and uh, Jalal Jay on. He'll translate for us. You know, he's in a big fight too, right? Who, who you say he's facing? Devin Vargas. And he just... Not a big fight. I guess that's a warm up. That's a that's a welcome to the zone fight. Devin, it is a welcome to the zone. I know zone Devin fight. because of the Victor Boss ball fight on 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 top rank and stuff. But I don't know that he's a big fight for Zhao Zhang. I think he did better with the Monaco fight when they gave him Dermian Dermitrenko, Dermitrenko, something like that. Well, you know, we had talked about it the other day. I mean, his losses are pretty much just top quality guys, even though they've racked up, 
you know, the, his last loss to Junior Fa. He lost to Andy Ruiz, Dominic Brazil. Uh, I always, I don't know how to say that guy's name, so I'm not going to say it. Kevin Johnson. Um, you know, so we're not like the best of names, but they're they're you know they're decent opponents, and he lost to them, and and there's really no shade in losing to you know those guys, but um, but again, it's like a test. You know, Zhao Zhang has to uh, pass that test. We saw that ain't always easy. No, it definitely isn't always easy to pass the test. That we were talking about that. Sometimes you got or, some fights that you're supposed to win, but there's a test. You got to go through some type of test. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're right. But, yo, I just want to know how come. Uh, okay, somebody. Uh, Frank, with you. Oh, Mike, what, I'm just texting like, yo, did you get it to work? So listen, man, this is all spontaneous because uh, we're over here reporting on Luis Ortiz fighting, and the rumor is that you are on this card versus Joey Abel. That's a big fight for you, bro. I'm so excited. I don't care if you want to confirm or deny. I'm just excited of the type of step up that it is. You know, this guy's been in the ring with Tyson Fury. He's been a sparring partner of Deontay Wilder. And you're only 6-0, and man, and I want to highlight it, man. I don't care what nobody else said. Oh, you're 7-0 and now? You're making, them make, you're making them faces like I missed the fight. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, 10-0, and that happened fast. Well, there you go. It's still 10-0, and and you in there with Joey Abel. You know, he's a, he's a good name. I watched him spar Deontay. We watched him fight Tyson Fury. Happy for you, bro. Uh, what, what about you? What do you think about this fight, this, this, this new opponent? And being on this fantastic, I ain't gonna call it fantastic, but I, I always love seeing a lot of heavyweights on the card. If you're gonna put one, put it all. And it's a triple head of heavyweights. I love it. Okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, everything pans out. But I want the fight. You know, um, there'd be opportunity for me to go against, you know, someone who uh, not just gonna lay down, you know? He's gonna, he gonna fight me. And that's what I need to get to where I want to be. So I'm all for it. Word. Well, you know. You know no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, you know, I know last time uh, you, uh, Ness, you mentioned, uh, you know, getting sparring and stuff like that. So, you know, like I had to bust a move and, and, and go down south in Florida, try, and, you know, try to get some rounds in with uh, the more. Um, the guys who got more of a foothold in, in the sport, you know what I'm saying? Like the guys with the bigger so who, records and stuff so like that. So, and as a matter of fact, I'm about to do that. I'm about to do it again. You know, make that three hour drive down there. Oh, right when he was about to drop it, right? You you, you froze up. You said you're about to make the three hour drive where? Down south. You know, remember you, you was telling me last time about how this this sparring, yeah, heavyweight yeah. sparring. But did you talk down to south. them? Did you talk to them? I, w- I already went down there. I went down there. I sparred. Oh. Um, and who'd you and spar? The plan is, who'd you spar? Come on, give us names. You went to see I Lewis and them. I drop a name. Um, what gym his name? Did you uh, go Trevor. To? I, I sparred Trevor Bryant. Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, next week. Next week, we supposed to go down there again, and we might. We might go down there and 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 plan to stay down mm. three days so that we could nice. just you know we spar on Thursday. And then Saturday, and then we'll and then we'll leave again. But you know, like I said, I'm willing to spar with with all of those guys. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, it's good work. That's the that that and especially like here in Florida, it's going to be like the best work that I'm gonna get because like you know, in my area, there ain't too many uh, ain't too many serious heavyweights because I've sparred a lot of these guys in my area, mm-hmm. and you know, I need rounds. And it, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really pan out up here. So I I just realized like, hey, I'm gonna just have to you know spend some gas, Yo, put some miles on. The I'm about to text you Herman's number, man. That's Luis Ortiz's trainer. He got, got caught. It. Oh, you got, got it? it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got. It. Okay. Okay. Um. Yo, uh, let let me ask you real quick, cause uh, and, and thank you, Mike, for coming on. You know, so last minute and early, we appreciate it as always. Um, the 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 cards November seventh. 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, you, you've been getting ready before that. Did you know that you were going to be on that date or you knew that the date was going to come fast? I mean, I, w- I was originally supposed to be on uh, the 24th on uh, Javante Davis uh, card. So I was already oh, wow. training. I was just training for a different opponent. But, you know, I was, tra- I was training for Orthodox. Um, and then, you know, that that kind of like uh, we got switched over to the 7th. And then my opponent, you know, he fell out. So, um, you know, they they uh, brought up Joey Abel's name. And, you know, I mean... Until the contract is there, I, I don't, I don't like, you know, think anything is set in stone. The same way with the previous opponent, until the contract's signed. But you know, um, I'm just going to train accordingly. And it, it, to me, it wasn't really, it's not really a big deal, you know, training from a, a orthodox to a south pole because I can switch, so it don't really matter. That's what's up, right. man. Look, we were so excited that we, we got you on last minute. We are scheduled to have uh, Sean George and uh, Jalal J, who's a heavyweight. So I, I am going to let you go. But uh, I just wanted to say and, and make sure that it was true, you know, that I'm happy for you, man. This is a great name to go ahead and start building that, that career. I'm also happy that you've made that connection and you're going down south. Beautiful. Right now, bro, they got Jeremiah Milton from Vegas there. Obviously, Cassius Cheney from Connecticut is there, um, and and Luis Ortiz and Carlos Negron is at Herman's gym. Like we would, that's literally what we're talking about. That Luis Ortiz is back on the card with you, and his spawn partners are top notch for this fight. So, yeah, man, you you said you got the number, so you good. But uh, we definitely want to schedule you more properly. Thank you for being so available last minute. Congrats on this fight, bro. Hopefully everything works out. Uh, Joey signs that contract, and you're in there. Shout out to Everlast for getting you some new gear. That's what's up. They Ah. they starting to see, baby. They starting to see. Let's go, Mike. We almost there, champ. Keep working, man. Keep working. Look, the chat see that you hungry. They like it. They're like, man, this guy's hungry. Three hours of spawn. That's fucking right. He want to be a world champ. Mike, give him your social media, please. Uh, Social media is... uh... Mike Coffee Time, Instagram. Uh, Mike Coffee Time on Twitter. And uh, Mike Polite on Facebook. So, you know, follow me. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mike, man. Thank you. Uh, we're going to definitely get you back on, bro. And uh, I hope that this one goes down for you. Take it easy. All right, you too. Thanks. All right. All right, ladies and gents. It's like I keep telling you, man. We need a uh, we need a, 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 an assistant. I didn't even look. See, I never put it in the calendar. Sean George and Jalal J are scheduled for right now at 930. So he just called. Let me go ahead and add him. Can you call back? Yo, you and you told us that he was going. You were like, yo, I got him scheduled. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I know. Let's I never put it in find the calendar. The champion wilding out right now. <clears throat> yo, but that's great uh, for Mike. I wish we could have talked to him for a little longer. Maybe we could bring him back in uh, tomorrow, maybe, if he's got the time. Yeah, man, listen. Good little scrap. Everything's going well. I'm I'm, I'm even more excited that we got him. But he's not. He's, he, he's calling, but he's calling, like, in some sort of joint call. He got three people in there. Who's in there with you, champ? Oh, he was his, oh, he added me. Nah, I'm gonna have to add John now. Damn, we gonna we gonna have to go to their call, man, just to make it quicker. Mario and Francis. Let's see where you at, Francis, the praying mantis. Oh, let's add Nexus. Mario, or you next about, up. You about to next be in up. there with him. Hold it down. Oh, I All guess right. he's still here. <laughs> Let me add Francis. It would be next up. Oh, that's right. It would be next up. It would be next up. Where are you? Where are you? All right. And then I will. Hello. Sean, how are you? Hey, what's going on? How's everything going? Everything is great, brother. Thank you uh, for taking out the time to come on the program and talk a little bit of boxing with us. Uh,. My co-hosts are jumping on now because you were in a private call, so we had to come to you. Okay. But uh, I, I got. I'm gonna try to get um, Jalay here too. Hey guys, what's going on? 
No problem. What's up? How you doing? How you doing? I'm all right. This is Francis in Canada and Mario Munguia in Corpus Christi, Texas. This is Sean George Trainer as Jalau J, right? Did I pronounce it right? No, Jalais. 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 So the yeah, first Jale. name is Jalau, right? No, first name is Jalais. Last, last name? Last name is last name is John. Oh, John. Uh -oh. Yeah, like J O H N, John. I've been ripping. That. I've been doing that last name dirty for years there you now. Go. <laughs> all right, that's Kurt. Hey, hey guys, how are you guys translator. Do you want right. to get um, Jalay in now? All right. Looks like Mario fools up. Where's, you got Kurt? You got Jalay, Kurt? Yeah, I'm getting him right now. Okay. So, Sean, man, talk to us, man. Very excited for you guys uh, to have gotten this contract with DAZN and Matchroom. I know how hard you guys have been working. And, you know, we've been following uh, the career of John for a while now. Uh, just, yeah, thoughts on being able to link up with Matchroom and actually get something on paper? Um, Matchroom, I think, um, credit to the, the Lane brothers as well. Um, those are Jalade advisors, um, Terry and Tommy. Um, we, we're happy to be with a good promoter. You know, Rock Nation, when they came to boxing, they was non-existent. Hey, Jalade, what's going on? Yeah, I'm you know. a, I'm a YouTube food. <laughs> Say it again. I'm eating food. Eating food. Oh, eating food. Okay, eating that's food. right. <laughs> nice. Nice. So but yeah, um, signing with Matchroom is a blessing. You know, we, we are with a real promoter now. Um, and they actually promote their fighters. They promote their shows. Um, and Jalei's going to get promoted. That's beautiful, man. Listen, two years ago, before Anthony Joshua lost, I called... Joshua going to China and fighting Jean in China. Is that something that was at least talked about? Like, if in three fights, we are at least thinking of the possibility of staging that fight if John can perform the way he is expected? John will perform the way he, he's, he is um, expected to. Um, that's a fight that we all want. Um, I know Jalei wants it. I know um, the Lanes want it. Want it. Um, we just have to get past Delvin Vargas first on November 7th. That's but, the start of everything. But to be clear, it was or wasn't a talking point in signing with Matchroom? Um, the, I'll let Jalei answer that. John? Yeah. How you doing, Jalei? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Did yeah, I'm you, I guess, insist on Eddie Hearn's Matchroom giving you the Joshua fight sometime in the future, but in China? Or is that fight a fight that you would only take uh, in the United Kingdom or America? Uh, Everyone是很关心你跟约瑟亚的比赛的事情。你想在中国打还是在英国打还是无所谓,你觉得什么时候能打成,以及你对这个比赛有什么想法和期待都可以说一下。他是一个非常伟大的一个拳手之一，然后现在我的脑海中每天想的都是他，我特别想他，我训练都想他，我吃饭我吃饭在想他，然后我睡觉也在想他，对，然后我想我我想尽快的把这场大战来促成，来进行
uh, because he did have, uh, you know, like a little lapse. He only had like one fight, I think, in 2019. Um, how how busy is he going to uh, look to stay? How how busy is uh, Zhao going to look to stay? Jale will fight every single month. I just want to be clear about it. Um, if you tell Jale who's he, who's he, I'll, I'll let him answer it himself. But um, if but he fight, if you tell Jale he's fighting next week, he's going to be fighting next week. He don't. He doesn't ask questions of who he's fighting. He just whoever the promoter put him with, put him in with. That's who he wants to fight. But Jalei can answer that question better than I can. Okay, Kurt. Kurt, can you translate that for him, Kurt? Yeah. Uh, 问你什么时候想打比赛？老肖说你什么时候都可以打。明天，明天就想打，因为你的整个心情是非常的想打比赛的，对不对 ？Yes. 任何时候，任何地点都可以打比赛。I can fight anytime, anywhere. Because I'm always prepared. How you doing? This is、uh, Francis from Toronto, Canada. Francis,、uh, Canada. Francis, Francis. Francis, okay. Yeah, from Hi, Toronto,、Francis. Canada. Yeah.、Okay. How you doing? How you doing?、I'm、I just good, got a、man. question、um, for the champ.、Uh, is there? We know we. I heard you guys speak of Anthony Joshua being, you know, I mean, the the fighter that you want to, you know, get to as soon as possible. Outside of Anthony Joshua, is there another? Is there another big name that、uh, you guys are looking? Hold on, that you guys are looking to get in the ring before Joshua. And the second part of that question is: Is there a particular style that you feel will give you that crossover world、um, type of、uh, type of fight? Ah, this is from Canada. He is from Canada. I will ask you a question. Ah, we are always talking about Yuan Shao. But before Yuan Shao, do you have any particular opponent that you want to fight? 以及你有没有特别想要打的风格？你觉得哪种对手比较适合你，或者是哪种哪个人你想要打？随便，因为我只想挑战强者，越强我越喜欢，但我只能打败强者，我就成为强者，就是这样。没有没有说谁没有固定一个人，不管是谁，只要比我强，我就我就我就要去干他。Not a particular boxer, but that also means. Any particular boxer, so I, I believe that to be the best, I really have to beat the best. I really have to beat every one of them. So the answer is no particular style and no particular boxer, but、hey, at the same time, it means everybody. Jale, they want to hear it, man. Call them out. Andy Ruiz,、um, um, Dylan White, all those guys. Ortiz, all the yeah, call it out. Call those guys out, man. These reporters just want to hear you. Close mouth, don't get fed. You say a person, and then this fight is probably going to be won. Jale is very humble, so he's going to be whoever you put in front of him. That's who he's going to fight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But he'll fight anybody. Just talk, speak your mind, Jale. 对，你想打谁？说一个名字，说不定这比赛真就成了。乔伊斯、杜布瓦都可以。然后泰森、弗里、约书亚、乔乔伊斯、啊，杜布瓦，可以打。Including Tyson Fury and eventually Anthony Joshua, all of them. Oh, he 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 it, wants everybody、it. in the UK. <laughs> I, I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Okay. okay. Um, would Joe Joyce, the winner of Joe Joyce Dubois, would that be in Tyson? Um, for the next fight? Be hard to make for the next fight. I would. Love... Would you ask him, Jale, or you ask me? Because Jale,、um, uh, you can、yeah. you can both both both. Um, Jale, listen, Joe Joyce, we want. Is no doubt about it. Two Olympic silver medalists,、um, two big men, two giants, two punchers.、Um, that's who we want.、Um, Dubois,、um, very talented boxer.、Um, if the fight happens, would they bring it out after this fight, Delvin Vargas? We want to fight whoever they put in front of us, and that's and that's a con- top contender. We know that we got to fight the contenders to get to the、um, to jo- Joshua to get to Tyson Fury. We know that. Kurt, can now, you uh, now, just、uh, let me let me get some backstory? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Kurt, can you just ask、uh, how he got into boxing and at what age? Because I see that he's thirty seven, so、uh, there had to be some sort of disconnect or late start, and, and we just want to know that story. Uh, I want to ask you. Now he's thirty seven years old, in the field. Uh, definitely the change is quite early. I want to see how you learn to fight, and why you learn to fight so early. Uh, because I was born in the middle of the country. 然后当时有国家任务要去打奥运会，因为国家荣誉高于一切，所以那时间国家需要我就打这个奥运会，然后所以说一直在在体制内，然后在在在国家队训练比赛
。然后等我国家队退役之后，然后才开始转职业，因为职业一直是我的梦想。The um the Chinese national team is something special. He would like to explain to you. Um, in China, the national pride overrides everything. So. Um, he had to go to Olympics representing China. He had to go to the nationals. I mean, the Chinese nationals. So that went to two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Can I interrupt、uh, you, Kurt? When he says he had to, is it kind of like、uh, for Cubans? Yes. 如果说你说国家利益高于一切，是不是你就是不得不去打，但是你又不想打，想要转职业，是这个意思吗？嗯，但是奥运会也是我的，在在业余时期的也是一个，也想拿到金牌，因为我零八年的时间我都已经拿到金牌了。然后我想着到二零一二年的时候，我想冲击一下金牌，然后到最后在四分之一决赛的时候，然后输给约书亚了，然后也把我的奥运会的那个金牌梦，然后都破灭了。破灭之后我就开始转职业。It's a combination of both. Um, the Olympic is his dream too, and back in 2008, when he got a silver, he wanted to try one more time and push for the gold in 2012, where he、uh, unfortunately lost to Anthony Joshua. So it's a combination of both. Olympic is his dream too. But you guys have to realize something:、um, professional boxing in China wasn't really an option、um, up until when Zhou Ximing,、um, Zhang Jilei,、uh, Meng Fanlong they all turned professional. You know, it's like they just after the amateur career, they go on to other things.、It、was never really、um, think about、uh, um, back in when I used to box. No one ever thought about a Chinese boxer as a as a professional fighter. You know, so、um, boxing, professional boxing, is fairly new to the Chinese community. So being an Olympian is was the ultimate goal at that point in time. How big know, is it though? It's big, right? Like the Chinese follow the Olympics in general, but boxing specifically, they follow it like you know, like we would, like or like others would follow soccer, or like right? Jalei, if Jalei put a post in China right now, he got over a million views. Wow, easy,、uh, you know, like whoa, it, it, it's money. It's like Jalei is a. You have to understand who Jalei John Jalei is. John Jalei is um six six two hundred. Fifty plus pounds at any given time walking around China. You know he's a big figure walking around there. He's a knockout artist. He when he when he when he talks, people want to pay attention to him. You know so、um, the market in China is huge. It's, it's an amazing market.、Um, it's untapped still to this day. Hope we hoping that match will get get it out there so you can understand the numbers when it when it comes down to everything. Um, now, real quick, a question for Jalal.、Uh, let me ask you because、um, the weight has fluctuated、uh, from your last few fights.、Uh, I think you weighed in as high as two seventy eight for the last one. That was wrong.、Um, that was wrong. Okay, was I was gonna、wrong. say because、yeah. it was like that was like a twenty eight. I mean, a twenty pound jump or something like that.、He、But if you can answer it, and then what you'd、yeah. like to? Oh, two sixty four. Okay, that's he, more yeah, along the line. He weighed in two sixty four his last fight. You、awesome. have to realize that. No problem, and then you have to realize too that J- J- November seventh is going to be almost a year again、yes. that Jalei didn't fight, and before、yes. then it was he was out for fourteen months. The layoffs in between is hard, you know. So we we're looking to stay busy, like I said. Matchroom promised us、um, a lot of a lot of fights. Oh, they'll deliver、up. on that. Yeah, I, yeah, they have a lot of dates, so I'm, I'm confident that. in that. Jalei, he loved activity. He loves it, and the more you see of him, the more you're going, the more you're going to see what I see, and what Kurt sees, what Delaney see, and John Jalei. And what's listen, the target weight that you would want him to come in at? Two fifty five. Two fifty five. Okay. Yes.、Uh, I think that's. Is that what we can expect for this Devin Vargas fight? Yes. Yes, you can expect that.、Okay. Kurt, can you ask uh, Jalei um, where in China he came up in, and and what was that upbringing like? What made him turn to boxing? 呃，你在中国是来自哪个地方的？为什么，呃，你会转向拳击呢？我是中国河南河南省深丘县一个县城。我之前我是练皮划艇，然后最后不适合练皮划艇之后，我就改到拳击
。然后改到全英，慢慢的喜欢全英。I'm from Henan Province, uh, Shenzhou County, where the Shaolin Temple is, and I started off as a canoeer. Uh, as time go by, my body got too big for that little boat, and so I I, I turned to boxing, and I that was kind of like a coincidence. But later on, I just became a fan of boxing. I love falling in love with boxing. So, so it was never like he got picked on. Like he didn't need the sport to defend himself. He just is a competitor. So, he 一开始不是说非得要练拳击，因为多热爱它，而是练了之后才去热爱它，是吧 ？Yes, yes, yes. 然后练，练了之后，从练拳击到现在差不多有二十二年了吧，二十三年了。然后现在还一直热。It's been it's been twenty three years, and boxing has always been. The ultimate dream. Yeah, yeah. Not to cut you guys off.、Um, the other thing about Jule Past、um, that you realize that in China they have schools, they have sports schools, right? So at a certain age, Jule even going to、um, it was all boxing. Like Jule, if you know if you, what you will notice from this point forward, because you haven't seen a lot of Jule in person, that he's highly skilled. It's not just that he's a puncher.、Um, he's very. He has a very high boxing IQ. Um, different styles, aggressive. If you're boxing against him, if you moving back and forth, it, he could go against. Or, and he's a faster big man too that he, he didn't really show yet.、Um, the sports schools in China they have boxing sports schools. So from when Jule started when he was sixteen, sixteen he was in the boxing sports school. That has nothing to do with box, boxing and school. Boxing and school. It's it's a little bit different, like sort of like the Cuban system, but they have a school for boxing. You know, instead、okay. of gym, and the government pays for that. Hey, you know? Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Can you ask、um, Jean,、um, Jalil, if he does road work? Because we know a lot of heavyweights. Some do road work, and some don't like to do road、right. work. If he does、uh, road work, a part of his conditioning. When you 跑步吗？因为很多重量级不喜欢跑步啊。你去怎么样看待跑步的这个事情呢？嗯，说实话，从练拳击到现在，我都不喜欢跑步。但是跑跑步又必不可少了。然后我是也在坚持着跑，刚开始也是不喜欢跑，然后现在慢慢的喜欢跑步，也可以算是。现在跑步也 so easy <笑>。Uh, I have to tell you the truth. I hate road work, but I also understand that it, it's a part of the sport, and I have to do it. And、um, since the day I started boxing, I hated.、It. Uh, today I still hate it, but I do it. It becomes so easy for me. Sean, how, Sean, how many miles? You, oh, I'm sorry. 跑步能使我的心肺功能更强大。嗯 ，road work makes me a、uh, a better man of about better, better cardio.、Mm -hmm. Sean, how much running do you make them do? I mean, at that height, you got to be careful with the knees. I mean, I'm six five, two fifty. I also hate running, but it hurts my knees if I do a lot、yeah. of running. Uh, Jale doesn't have problems with those kind of things.、Um, when I first met Jale, yeah, I, yeah, I've been with Jale since 2010, yeah, 2010, 2009, early 2000, late 2009,、um, 2010. Jale did not like running. Now he's keeping up with me. <laughs> some days, some days he goes faster than me.、Um, he goes, he does his four or five miles on the long days, and he does his interval running. Like and he doesn't. He when I first met him, he used to complain about it. Now he just looks at me like, okay, and he just do it.、Um, whatever I ask him to do,、um, he understand. He understand. Like he just said, he understands why he has to do it. Damn, he doesn't、Sean. have to like、What's、it. The 11, What's the interval running、oh, like? Hold on, eleven years you've been with him. Yeah, I've been with Jalay since he was an amateur. We met、um, in USA versus Lou Dover, my my. Former manager, my mentor, my ah, so my guy introduced me to him. So he introduced me to when I retired from boxing. He introduced me to the Chinese national team when Jalay was there、um, against USA. USA versus China and, in New York City, and that's how I was introduced to、um, John Jalay. Wow, you know?、uh, man, I think wasn't that like two thousand eight? No, that was um no that's that's when he went to the Olympic Games. I met him after the Olympic the Games. Olympic, yeah, so okay, Olympic Games, okay.、Yeah. So it was like because I, I I remember that、uh, show、Wait. that USA. I remember we had the press release for it. So 
Yeah, I was yeah. working with TBV at the time. So, so. if in yeah. 2008 he got a silver, did he ever get to meet Wilder or no? Because Wilder was 2008 with Demetrius Andre, Gary Russell. Good question. Yeah, yeah he had a brother. Good. Uh, 你零八年拿到银牌，是不是跟维尔德交过手？因为维尔德他记得是铜牌，是不是跟维尔德打过 ？No, no, no, no. 呃呃，我是银牌，他我是重量，我是超重量级，因为在奥运会里面有个超重量级，一个重量级，然后他是超重量级。Yeah, um, I was the super heavyweight plus ninety one kilo. Deontay Wilder was the heavyweight, ninety one kilo. So with different different weight. Different weight class, so basically Wilder was, Wilder was a cruiserweight, basically yeah. at that moment in time. Then and Julie was super heavyweight. At, yeah. I I know that. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt ahead, Axa, Axa, John, how does he feel about the new rumors and headlines of a possible super heavyweight division in the pros? Very similar to like the amateurs, where Wilder would be a regular heavyweight, and anyone above, uh, above I think. Um, Dan, what was the man that we had who's running it? Oh, I don't remember. Oh my God, the old guy. It was. His name. But anyway, I think it's 250 and above, right? It's super heavyweight. No, I think it was 225. 225. 225. I think it was 225 and above. 嗯，他想听听你的意见，因为现在有很多传言，想在重量级里面再分，呃，两百二十五以上再分你一个级别。你觉得这样公平吗？或者你觉得有什么想法？这个。我感觉就是，你也可以分分了，也可以，但是你现在分太多了，对吧？然后有什么硬腰带啊，什么什么金腰带啊，然后还有过渡啊，什么什么什么。我感觉其他那些腰带全都是，都是都是，只有一个冠军，嗯，知道吧？嗯 ，they they they um my concern is if we do this weight division. That we put 250 as a mark,、um, it's gonna benefit some boxers from that weight range. But it's gonna be another new division, new belts.、Um, you know, there are so many belts out there already, and you're gonna add new belts to that. People are gonna be confused. Great point. Because, well said. Glad you. Glad he agrees. Because everyone only has one goal: the world champion. Agreed. Because there are so many belts, only one goal: the world champion. I I believe there should be only one world champion. That's the big one.、Uh, Kurt, I got a question. Yes, for, I love、uh, that. I got a question for John.、Um, it says that he resides in Vegas. When I'm assuming he's not back home in China, is does he train in Vegas? No, Sean can Sean can explain that. Yeah, they're in Jersey.、Okay. Um, Tits,、um, Jersey? Yeah, Jersey, New Jersey. He lives in.、Okay. Um, Bloomfield, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Okay. Yes,、yeah, because his first fight was in Las Vegas. He got、yeah. his、um, boxing ID there. Okay. The reason why I was asking, I was wondering if if the East Coast was by choice versus the West Coast.、Um, no, he, his he, his federal ID he got in、um, Las Vegas,、right. and so that's what that's why they say he was as in Vegas.、Okay. I'm assuming, but、um, he lives in lives and trains when he here in the states in、okay. Bloomfield. Okay. Now, now I noticed Jale、uh, speaking a little English、um, in very well, might I add.、Um, is it a plan to learn English to get that crossover type of stardom to to further himself into the American fan base? He knows you speak some English, but if you go to America, the fans of the Lions are very welcome. You need to speak a lot of English or basic communication. Do you have any plans to continue to learn English? Yes, we will continue to learn English. 然后我现在英语会一点一点一点来进步。I've been learning, and、uh, I'll definitely be keeping learning English. I'm making little pro- progress every day. He's not joking. He walks in the gym every day and says something in sent full sentences. And Sean is my English teacher. <laughs> is he? <laughs> <laughs> and I speak That's bad good. English. That's, That's good. good. That's、oh, good. My English、okay. is horrible. <laughs> My trainer and the English teacher. That's good. That's good.、Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he's doing a good job. Yeah,、Both. trying. Awesome. That's awesome.、Mm-hmm. I love the dynamic, Sean. I mean, I, it's clear that you understand.、Um, I, I know Chinese is not the right word to say. I know that it's broken down into providence, but I'm not sure what the providence. Mandarin. Mandarin. Okay. Yes. So it sounds like you understand, you know, Mandarin, you know, and more than understand, understand English. Oh, really? Perfect Chinese. No,、yeah. no, no, no. Wow. Okay. I'm okay. Isn't Mandarin the hard one too? I brag. I think, 
I brag. I told them that you were, I didn't know we were going to have a translator. I told them you would translate nine times oh, okay. out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm like, um, don't get me wrong, I, I could understand it. And me and Jale communicate very well. Um, me and Fan Long, we communicate very well. Anybody I train. Um, but um, it's the hard to me, in my opinion, is one of the hardest languages to learn because one word could mean three different things if you say it, you say it um, in the wrong tone. They speak in three tones. Wow. Right? So um, a lot of times I would chop up a word and they look at me. I could, I could say, um, for example, one time I was in China, I would try to get home from Kurt. He was there. And um, I'd go into the taxi. I'd tell him my location. And the cab driver turned and look at me. I was like, oh, I'll teach you. You can be more. Right? It's just something real, something real simple, right? This guy looked at me. I, I'm a, in English. He looks at me. He says, "What?" I said, "I'll teach you." She can be Mar, and I give that the address, Olympic Training Center, right? So I call Kurt, and he gives him the phone. And Kurt is I'm um, having, and Kurt translate, and I'm here Kurt saying the same exact thing that I said it. I'll teach you. She can be Mar, right? And the guy looked at the phone. Oh, I'll teach you sing more. And I look at that. I think that's what I just said. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? But then Kurt. Then Kurt tells me you have to say it in a certain type of way. The tone, <laughs> the, the, yeah, tone, the, the tone. tones, yes. and everything yeah, else. Gotcha. And, I'm, and I'm like, man, this is crazy. So you just have to understand what you're saying, how you say it, and that's the hardest thing for me in Chinese. And like, you have Arabic and you have Chinese. Is the two hardest languages to learn, in my yeah. opinion. But yeah. Um, I'm still horrible at it. I just know a little bit more than most. Does it, does it, does, uh, but the barrier I'm sure is broken down in terms of boxing, right? I mean, is it at some point, is there like a universal language, you know, when you're like training and coaching, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, if I call numbers out, he would know what I need to, like just straight out numbers. Great he point. would know where it But at the same time, Jale no instructions in English as well. I could tell Jale you got to work off the jab. You got to move your head. You're going to understand what that means right away. You know, mm -hmm. that's universal. Um, but I like to speak Chinese, especially in a corner or when I'm yelling instruction because nobody else knows uh, what I'm saying. And I don't want the other guy to hear what I'm trying to tell Jaleigh to do. Or he, he, That makes sense to you? Yes, you know, so, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like Gus the model used to talk to Mike Tyson in numbers and combinations. Yes, and yes. like, Wait, what the hell? You know, so that's why I like to speak Chinese in the corner. And the, I, honestly, any other body, I, anybody else that I train... I probably start speaking to them in the corner too, so I would teach them Chinese as well. So you <laughs> oh, know, that's you so know, awesome. that's so that'd so be cool. Awesome. So I hope y'all get a Texas fight so I could see y'all. <laughs> got a question? Go okay. ahead. Uh, Jale, I just want to know if you can if you can rank these fighters one, two, or three. Who you would fight first? Mm -hmm. Luis Ortiz, Andy Ruiz, or Dominic Brazil? Your mm. three fighters, let you pick one. Who you want to fight first? Ah, first, Ortiz. The second one, Andy Ruiz, right? Andy Ruiz. The second one, Luiz. The third one, Brazil. You can take three. You pick one. He gonna go with Ruiz. How do you want with? Okay, okay. Ruiz. Told you. Andy Ruiz. He's a he's a good. I'm telling you, he's either. But I'm I'm thinking Dominic Brazil. Okay. Yeah. You want to tell me? I give Ruiz a tag. Then I take you. Because I fought him in the amateurs. Oh. And the score was 15 to 2. Wow. But I have to say that amateur boxing doesn't represent professional boxing. But even if right now I can still fight him without a problem, I can still take care of him. Number two, Luis Ortiz. Oh, I spar with him uh, when when the Chinese national team came to Cuba for a training camp. Uh, but back then he was a, a heavyweight and I was a super heavyweight in the amateurs. Yeah. Number three, Brazil. Wow. How, how did y'all get? Um, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but how did y'all get? Um, 
from Francis. Louis Ortiz to Andrew Ruiz to Dominic Brito. Not y'all. That's the his re- question. The reason why. The reason why. The reason why I used um, Ruiz and um, Brazil is because they're a common opponent of Deontay Wilder, uh, and okay. also Deontay Wilder is a lot later on down the line is looking to fight a Andrew Ruiz. Okay. Okay, I get it. Kind of okay. all being on the PPC side, saying you're okay, on the match. Yeah, right. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay, I got you. But right. I, I, I want to ask, uh, have you watched tape on Victor Bas- Bis- Bisball versus uh, Devin Vargas? And has uh, Jule done as well? Or, or do you just study tape and, and come up with the game plan alone? Um, we do everything. Um, we study tape. Um, we watch video. I call him over to my place. I go to his place. We go to Kurt's place. Um, we sit down and watch. Um, I don't want any surprises. I'm not one of those fight coaches that would tell my fighters, don't watch it, don't worry about it. You know, I want him to understand what I see. This is why I'm telling you to do this. This is why we're working on this. This is why we're doing that. Um, he asks questions. He may disagree. He may agree. We go back and forth, and then we go to the gym, and we set our game plan. And that's how it works. You know, we, we, are, a team. we are a team when it let, comes down to that. I believe in doing homework. A personal Jelay question believe- here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, is it healthy for the fighter and the trainer to disagree and, 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 and kind of maybe debate on certain things? Of course. Okay. Listen, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer is that it's not do as I say. If I say throw a jab, for example, something real simple, right? And the fighter's not throwing the jab, there's a reason why he's not throwing the jab, you know? So maybe he, he may have to faint behind that jab first. But yet I'm explaining it to him why why are you doing it this way, and he may come up with something. You know what? So that's what comes with Plan A, B, and C. So you have different plans. So just in case this plan ain't working, okay, we go to your plan now, and we, this is how we're going to do it. Um, but that it, the disagreements, and me and Jale don't disagree. It's either I get what you're saying, but can I do this as well? Or um, okay, Jale, I like how you I like how you work that. Um, you're working that left hand to the body, but you got to do it this way. You're reaching too much. There's there's different ways you have to do it. You know, m- remember, Jule has a very high boxing IQ. You know, um, he makes adjustments. Um, he has fast feet, which you guys have not seen yet. He's He could, he has hand speed, which I haven't seen yet. Y'all seen him knocking people out. Y'all seen him, um, his last fight, um, going the distance for the first time with a guy that could take a punch you know there's a lot of different things that um Jale can do that you haven't seen yet which i'm looking forward to showing you guys starting now but yeah disagreeing is is not a is not a bad thing in my opinion uh is it safe for us like fans of him obviously i've been following you guys i've been thinking about two years so i've been yeah. you know preaching the choir to my listeners about how good he is and what I've seen him doing sparring with the Adam Kovnakis and et cetera of the world. And mm-hmm. they're, they are expecting John to get the knockout over a guy like Devin Vargas. You know, he, uh, like, you know, we, we, we actually talking about that card this morning and we said, you know, he's a tough guy. Uh, mm-hmm. He does have some punch and power. But he's not on that level, you know. Charles Martin mm-hmm. has knocked him out. Joseph Parker has knocked him out. He's not a name in the heavyweight division. He's more like a test for a prospect. So I'm saying my guy, John, is going to get the knockout. Uh, can you put some confidence in me? Jalei thinks he goes for the knockout every single round. And you don't, you need to understand... He's punching different. I, I I know people always say certain things. I've been in the ring. Like, one, I sparred with, not sparred, I fought Devin Vargas in amateurs. Oh, wow. Um, in 1998. <laughs> um, I, I, I fought his brother in 97, and I fought him in 1998. Um, Jale, where do you go? Okay, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but um, I expect this fight not to go to this. Jale's going to win this fight inside the distance. They put, Delay is punching different. He's really punching like, like really different. It's not just hand speed. Like he's just, I felt his power, and this is really different than anybody else. So, I, I will say, I will honestly say, this fight is not going. This fight won't see three, four rounds. 
to be let, honest. Let me but, ask you, do, do you know if he watched, Kurt, do you know if uh, John watched the Guido Vigianella versus Kingsley Abe fight on top rank? Did you watch it, Sean? That's the that's the, the past week? Yes. This weekend. With it's Ivan? Just, with, with Ivan? No, Kingsley Abe versus uh, Guido Vigianella. He's a Sam Jones fighter from the UK. Okay. I haven't seen it. Um, I have I have I haven't seen yeah, it. But I don't think I, I don't think we I don't think we have seen that. But that's the other thing too. I'm not to cut you off. Um but that's the other thing too in this pandemic and how fights are happening. Um I used to hear Mayweather not Mayweather, but like it's different fighting in the empty room. So a lot of fighters have d- different advantages going in. You know what I mean? So you never like some people get stage fright when they get inside that ring. You know, so in my opinion, everyone is always dangerous. You know, heavyweight division, anything can happen. But um, I'm so confident in Jaleigh right now. I like what I'm seeing. He's going around. He's doing 10 already. He's already in shape. Um, he's going to miles. He's sparring. He's doing a lot of different things. I'm confident that Jaleigh can win by knockout inside. All right. Well, that's my I got, last question. Go ahead. I, yeah, I got I got two questions. Uh, one for Jaleigh. Uh, what does he think of a fight against uh, Philip Hergovich? One and for trainer, there's been it was reported that Deontay Wilder split from his trainer um, due to the fact of uh, disagreements. At, well, let's put it at a, at a disagreement Sean, of the you know, stoppage you know of the Breland, fight, right? Huh? Uh, Sean, you, you you're familiar with Breland personally, right? Because of the New York. Yeah, area? man, he's beat me up in the gym. Yeah. Okay, like, so <laughs> I, I want I want to know you just you and Ness just had a little conversation about trainers and fighters disagreeing. Mm-hmm. So piggybacking off of that, I want you to tell me what your thoughts on the whole situation with Breland and um, and Deontay Wilder. But first, I want Jalei to answer the question okay. against uh, Felix Hergovich. Okay. Uh, 奥运会同伴那个吗？对，奥运会，呀呀，呃，也三年也挺那样儿，非常辉煌的，对吧？也欧洲冠军，然后奥运会铜牌，然后转转战职业，转战职业之后，然后也一直在胜利。然后我想应
I'm not doing it. I see what's happening. You know, so that's just my opinion. You know, Jale could tell me he could be upset with me. He could fire me. He could, but he's still going to see his son. Hey, he's one quick gonna, one. Yeah. Kurt, how does Jale feel about that? Sorry, Ness, my apologies. Okay. Real quick, I want to know how Jale feels about that situation. Kurt, please. Uh, we're about to let him go. 因为他的教练比赛的时候扔了白毛巾啊，威尔德不愿意。你觉得这个情况，你有什么看法？我感觉在那种情况下，教练扔白毛巾是非常正确的，因为他已经受到重击了，就是他在战绩了，他继续打下去会给会对他造造成更大的伤害。然后他的教练也是在保护他，然后能让他继续有个良好的身体、良好的精神状态，然后去迎战下一场比赛。而不会，而不是说看着他挨打，然后教练不管，然后这样对他更大的伤害，有可能会终止他的职业生涯。所以说，教练在保护他。所以说，我都感觉这这这这这没必要把教练给开除了。这个责任应该不在于教练。OK。嗯 ，What Mark did was absolutely right by throwing the towel. He was protecting his boxer because by doing that, his boxer could have a longer professional career. And if you let your boxer to fight. To your last breath in the ring, he probably end up retire that same very night. So Mark was doing the right thing, and the responsibility should not be. It's not Mark should not take this responsibility. You know, he should not take this blame. Well said. It's on well, you, Ness. Go uh, ahead. Well, uh, Sean, Kurt, and、uh, John, I want to thank you guys obviously for coming on the program and、uh, talking a little bit of boxing with us, giving us an update on everything that is、uh, Jule, John,、uh, Sean. Thank you so much for always being available and accessible. Kurt, thank you for translating. If you、thank、guys you. could give out all your respected social media for everybody that isn't following, can do so. Do that at this time, and and thank you again, guys. Thanks for thanks for having Thank us、you. on, man. I appreciate you guys.、Um, you can follow me on Sean George One Hundred One on Instagram、um, to see the stories of Jale.、Um, and thanks, Ness and Francis. And what's your name? Mario. Mario Mungia. Mario. Sorry. Yeah. Mar- sorry. That's、no, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I cut off on the last one. So. Okay. And remember, he fights November seventh in Hollywood,、yes. Florida, on the Zone,、yes. on the Devin Haney Yuri Kisgamboa undercard.、Uh, it's a great card. You got、uh, Zale me, on there versus Devin Vargas, a, an opponent who stepped up before. You got Hergovich on the card as well, Raymond Ford. So it's going to be a good card. Great card. Can't wait to it. Let me slide this in. See if we can break some news. Have they told you whether or not this will be fans? Because Florida's back wide open. Yeah.、Um, last, last time I checked, it's not close to the fans. That's closed. Damn. That's、right. that. But last、so、time、far. I checked,、right. yeah, um, we'll pay pay.、Um, you agree? Yes, right? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah.、Um, even if it's open, but I still believe that it's closed doors.、All、yeah.、Right. Well, guys,、uh, enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you so much. And、uh, yeah, man, smile when you're doing that road work, Jule. <laughs> Jule, <laughs> Kurt, Sean, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right, it, guys. guys. Thank you. you. There you have you it,、doing? ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jalal J, Sean George, and Kurt、uh, on the program. Thank you so much.、Uh, let's talk some boxing. We're gonna get out to the phone lines.、Um, you know the number to call in: one four two five five six nine fifty two forty one. Press one one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People hotline. Remember, today is Thursday, flagship Thursday. We'll be back at seven p.m. Eastern with our normal flagship show, where we get to discuss this weekend's fights, make our picks, and you know get the brag the way that I do. I woke up this morning. In a deep sweat, I didn't realize Showbox was last night, and I thought maybe I didn't pick Conwell because I damn sure didn't see Conwell get the ninth round, ninth round knockout last night because I had no clue. Shame on Showtime, shame on to- Showtime, and this is me saying, manager, you see, no network is free from criticism for me. I'm not like you, Mr. PBCs and Mr. Top Ranks. I don't do that. I just do who puts on good fights. Shame on Showtime for not promoting those gentlemen better than what they were promoted in a quote-unquote special Wednesday night event. Who did they tell? How special was it if they didn't promote it? Unfortunately, I know I'm not. I'm a hardcore and I missed it, so I could just imagine the shit numbers it's gonna do. But 
Anyway, on a good note, one four two five five six nine fifty two forty one. Press one one time to voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People Hotline. We're going out to the callers. We want to get a quick word from you. We will be right back with another show. We're scheduled at 1030, so it's going to be drive-by mode for most of you, unless you're a boomerang or some of that hot shit. But we do got to get to this other show. Plus, we got a 7 o'clock show, and we did three shows yesterday. So if you haven't already done so, drop us that five-star review on iTunes like we tell you to do every single morning. Actually, we got one from Down Under. Let me pull that up. You know what I mean? I tell you guys to drop those reviews and then I don't read them. Unfair. Unfair. Got to pull that up. Where is it? Come on. Stalling, 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 stalling. Where are you? Where are you? What about if I just press reveal? Write the word reveal. There you go. Sunday it came in from down under. And uh, this one is from Axel in Australia. Axel, Mil- Axel D. Millions. Oh, you got that money, huh? And uh, he says, greetings from down under. So glad I discovered your show. Great analysis and great laughs. Keep it up. Number one boxing podcast. And that's all that we want is for you to continue to drop those five-star reviews and keep us number one uh, on iTunes for boxing podcasts. Let's go out to a quick reminder. Remember to rate us five stars on iTunes. Subscribe to youtube.com slash the boxing voice for the latest and greatest interviews with your favorite fighters. All right, looking like J Mac in New Orleans. First up, what's going on, champ? You avail? You know how these bitches is in the sport. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style. I'm a gorilla, I'm a dog. I'm a dog, I'm a gorilla. The smartest thing you can do is to stay away from Darius. It boogie can't man. be the boogeyman I'm a if, I'm, the if, I, if I'm if I'm if I'm not chasing him. You want to bet a hundred thousand on that? Let's bet a million. Easy. Let's bet a million. Yo, can you hear me? How I sound? Yo, you good? Hey, for the record, I, I didn't. I cost some of your, your rent, so I kind of missed some of the show. But I think I got a perspective on it. With uh Michael Polite coming on, um, for my just for clarity, I don't have a problem with PBC. I struggle with PBC at 147. That's my big problem in the sport. Uh, uh, for as Michael Polite, is that's the guy you was talking to about needing to promote himself better, or they was trying to say he's too quiet, or yeah. they, they think he don't take it serious because his personality. Oh no 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 no! They ain't never. Oh. I mean, he is quiet, oh. but they ain't never say he don't take it serious. Nah nah nah. No, all right. Well, you did an interview with somebody on here not too long ago, and maybe you could correct me after my call. But um, shout out to the uh the guy. Uh, I thought it was hilarious when he said he think of AJ in the, the toilet. <laughs> how he using the bathroom yeah. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that but funny. I understand the ain't, ain't a language barrier, but I I get what he get uh mean. But somebody got a crush on AJ. Uh, for his dad, um, the trainer, he was. Very, uh, very. Let me say something. About- Yo, that trainer was a world champion too. We were talking about that the other day. Sean Jones was a world yeah. champion, bro. I remember you said that. And uh, nah, he is cool, man. He's, he 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 speaks like three different languages. Uh, Juan in the BX. Juan in the BX. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? He's super smart. Yeah, he's smart. I love that he said they watch tape. You see some trainers, oh, we don't watch that. We don't do that. I don't want my guy getting. Nah, tape. Let's go. BX, Juan, what up? Nah, nah, I said I'm good, fellas. Good right, show. Pasa bueno dia. Get your work on. King I mean of Vessex. Call of the year. Call of the year. Just like the king is what I mean. I mean, the king is what I mean. I mean. Hey, you know what's crazy? Shout out to TBV, as we always do. You know what's crazy? Jimmy Williams, he from Plainfield, Ness. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he used to train out of Strap City, but he from Plainfield. Who? So Who, Sean? Jimmy Williams. Oh, Jimmy Quiet Williams. Storm. He fought against Brandon Lee last night. Mm. Oh. So I had that one covered. I even threw up a post on it because I wanted him to get that that love. And plus, it's a, it was a welterweight fight. Brandon Lee and, and Jimmy Williams, you know what I'm saying? So that was cool to see. Again, 
Showtime was terrible. Like I covered it more than anybody else. And I'm not saying like I'm saying the hardcore of the hardcores, you know. So it was cool though. Um shout out to Charles Conwell in Ohio. Um and and the, as far as the topic of the show, um, I ain't even gonna touch it, but I thought about something. We might have to touch another T V V mixtape and make a song called Check Engine Lights and White Fridges. <laughs> That's my call. <laughs> yo, 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 check engine lights and white fridges. That ain't no cool. ring walk. That ain't no ring walk, Mario. Uh, that ain't no ring that walk. Ain't no ring walk. <laughs> that ain't no ring walk. Yo, Bomb Boxing. Bomb Boxing in Arizona. What up, what up, what up? Just listening. I know we got a lot of hard workers out there. Steve in Chicago. Stonebone, Colorado. What up? What up? Morning. Yeah, man, man that was a uh, uh, interesting interview, man. He's, he's funny, man. He was. I like a laid back fighter, man. Confident. It ain't got to be a fake bravado. You can have a little edge to you, and be funny. So, and people still gonna take you serious by what you do in the ring. And um, all of this personality stuff. Most of these guys who got this bravado out personality. They all get beat up in the ring. They all get knocked out. And most of them don't even throw punches. Most of the guys who be popping off like they tough, they get in the ring and put their hands in their pocket. You can hear their coach say, throw your hands, man. Come on, please. You know, so I like a laid back <laughs> fighter that's confident about himself. I want to see. I think the young guys, all these young heavyweights, we're going to have a more interesting time than we got now. I don't think we're going to have belt hoarding and all of the hating and all of this uh, UK beef and all of this fake stuff that went on for years with Wilder and AJ. I think these young heavyweights, once these belts get dispersed, I think these. Cut it, cut it, cut it. I agree. Cut it. I agree, man. And that's the thing. We have a crop of young heavyweights. You know, AJ's 28, right? Is he still 28 or is he 30 now? You know, but guys uh -huh. are young. You know, uh, Dubois is young. Ronnie Hines out of uh, Ohio is young. He's thirty. He's thirty. There you go. Still, that's that's young, man. That's young. Younger than younger than me. How old is Cassius Cheney? He's young. You know, people yeah, are he's young, young, man. So we're gonna get mad fights to come unless people retire early. He's thirty three. Cassius is thirty three. Ooh, okay. We gotta still, get moving. Still younger than still me. Still young. I mean, for heavyweights, that's their prime. Remember, thirty four is their prime. So, like, he's still doing good, and he's at the brink. He's already, you know, eight, 19 and 0, 13 KOs, and, you know, in the last eight months, he made the best decision of his career uh, by, by leaving Calvin Ford and getting with Herman Caicedo. Not that Calvin is any less of a trainer simply because of the heavyweight work. That's it. There's heavyweight hey, work in, in, in Miami for him. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. Out. There's over 300 of us watching, listening right now, and we only got a hundred thumbs up. Come on, man, do your best. <gasps> Hit the thumbs up button. You know what I'm saying? Hit the subscribe button while you're at it, so you can get notified. Don't forget the bell so you can notified when we go live, man. Right now we gave you a great, two great interviews already. The least you can do. Oh, it don't yeah. cost you nothing. Just smash that like button, man. Get them up. Yeah, man. We having a difficult time with these subs, man. I mean, yesterday I thought we was at like 444. I woke up today. We was at like 432. I just refreshed. We have 438. It's like, bro, I just want to get to 117,000. Like, can I get to 117,000? I'm at 116,438, and, and I'm feeling kind of whack right now. You know what I mean? I'm feeling like. Not accomplished. You got to help out with that. Uh, J Mac Boomerang, actually, Jonathan Sims in Ohio. What up? Good morning, TBV. Um, thanks for another show. Buenos dias. Uh, I'm going to get right to it, man. And that, this necessarily doesn't apply to you, but I don't understand the question about Breland in the towel. Every trainer who agrees with that have one thing in common. They're not Wilder's trainer. When Breland took 
Wilder's money, he's contractually obligated to adhere to what Wilder, the fighter, says who's in control. If Wilder said you let me die in that ring, you let him die in the ring, simple point blank. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but when you took Wilder's money, you agreed to the rules that he set forth. So Breland, if he was fired because of that, deserves to be, because he was not obliged to what uh, he agreed to when he took Wilder's money. You let him die in the ring, period, point blank. You don't throw in the towel. If you don't agree with that, don't take his money and don't be his trainer. That's my call. I get it, man. I get it. Listen, uh, J-Mac, Boomerang. Yo, how's it sound? All good. Hey, hey. Look, add a counter punch on this one for me. I'm glad you can. I, 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 I'm pulling over. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's better to pull over because you 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 breaking up a little bit. I need. I, I'll start the clock the clock when you stop uh, driving. But yeah, man. Uh, don't forget if you haven't already subscribed. All right, all right. You ready? High, high sound now. You good? High sound. It, I mean, it, it, me? it's it's definitely robotic. Are you using the Bluetooth today? No, it's it's the service. I'm in a bad area. Let me put it on. Yo, shout out to Everlast, man. Sent Mike polite coffee some 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 stuff, man. Yo, he was rocking to it too. That's what y'all need to do, man. Sleeping on my man. Yo, how it sound right now, man? You good? You good? Yo. Um, I'm glad you put me on after that dude, man. Man, I don't get these dudes on here, and I'm not going to disrespect nobody. All this, he signed a contract, let a guy die. Do you realize if he let that guy die, he would be ran out of the sport? Nobody will want him ever again for him. J-Mac, J- man, let me go to Stonebone and come back to you. Drive away from that area, champ. It just ain't working out for you. We will give you all your time again. I'm gonna yeah, go to I want to hear that call, too. I'm going to Bond Boxing. Who's available? Stonebone, you next. Talk to me, Bond. Hey, hey yo, how I sound? You straight. All right. No, I, I know where J-Mac was going with that call contractually obligated no man you as a trainer or in the fight game you you have an emotional attachment to your fighter and you can't stand there like a man and say you're a man if you're gonna let a man die when you know what he's capable of and he wasn't right and he knows more he knows more of what happened in the training camp and what's going on and where wild is that uh i don't agree with that don't make no sense yeah and you know we'd be killing him if we if he let why didn't he stop the fight? Why didn't we stop the? Why didn't he stop the fight? We'd be killing him. I don't want to hear that mess, man. That's not right. All right, I'm gonna listen. All right, you know it, it'd probably be good to get Buddy McGirt on, man. Buddy um, has had a bad rap, right? Buddy was known for throwing in the towel notoriously too early, and then Buddy had Maxim Devishov die in the ring. So you know, all of us trying to play Monday morning coach and what we would do if we have the life of a fighter in our hands you just talking man you really just talking because that's someone else's life you can't play with someone else's life stone bone boxing talk right. to me what up what up hey shit hey, i was just watching uh uh floyd versus uh Gotti, and buddy didn't stop that one too so he that was one of the worst beating I ever seen in a boxing match what Floyd did to Gotti. And look, at, 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 at a certain level, as a boxing trainer, you might get 10% of a purse or 10% or agreed upon. Certain guys, you might get 5%. Big guys, you might get a negotiated purse. Like Floyd wasn't giving his trainers 3% of 30, I mean, uh, 10% of 30 millions and 50 millions like that. But so you're telling me a guy that you only paying 5%. Or 10%, you're going to give him the power of to decide if you die or live and not even just give you the you, – he's your coach. That's your eyes outside of the ring. He's trying to see what you can't see. 
So if you're only paying him 10% so he can let you die, maybe you should. Maybe, maybe that's why some of these cultures lead these people. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. I didn't really get it where he was going. With the ten yeah. percent and let you die. I mean, I'm yeah, that one had me lost too. He he wasn't super clear in what he was saying. I think I kind I kind of got to understand what you're saying. That why what's the point of giving somebody ten percent? You know what I mean? With all that type of power, I, I felt like he he's saying yeah, but then if you're gonna have give somebody that type of power, you got to pay them a little bit more so that it's you know it's kind of worth they worth their time. Yeah, that's them that. that. That's what know. that's what I took from it, but I could be wrong, right? Nah, yeah, okay. yeah, no, no, no. I'll I, I took. I took it a little bit the same. I thought more of it was like he's not getting paid enough to have to deal with the repercussions of that, I guess. Right, right, right. And, but, but I agree with you. I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to put words in Stonebone's mouth. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I think Ness just said it best, though. I think what Ness just said in, in terms of, you know, uh, a man's life and what that's worth, like the agreements and, and the innuendos that go in with – you know, trainer, fighters, relationships, and what the responsibility... I think, number one, that responsibility is to the fighter's safety and health. I think that's what every single trainer would say, no matter who we brought on. Yeah, I mean, look, I never felt about it as much, as, as deeply as I feel about it today, and I think it's because of the way Sean said, you know, like, as a trainer, he spoke about what he felt Breland was looking at witnessing his fighter who never looked like that bleeding from the ear not yes. knowing not knowing where that blood was coming from you know not knowing what was going on also as a trainer he said when he watched him walk into the ring he already looked zapped and i'm talking about sean george who was just on the show said that so like you know listening to a trainer who's in that position who was a former world champion who fought who boxed who sparred with mark breeland hey. I mean, I'm just listening, and, and, Yo, and, and it, it makes sense. Check me out, Ness. Check me out, Ness. Just to piggyback of what you said, one of the things when Wilder asked Breland in the ring why you stopped the fight, he literally leaned over to him and said, you got blood in your ear. Like, you're bleeding out your ear. Like, they didn't really talk about it before, you know what I'm saying? So, you could tell he was really concerned about the blood coming out of the ear. It was one of the main reasons why he stopped the fight. I'm not I sure think if the punches, I think that was the main reason to me. I think the biggest problem is is so many people keep saying, and, and Ness made this point the other day on air, that people keep saying, like, oh, he saved his life. He saved his life. Like, you know, it's one thing to use it hy in hyperbole and to be like, oh, well, you could have saved that man's life that night, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, to put it like that, it makes it sound like as if, you know, Wilder was, like, crawling to the ropes and picking himself up like it's just it's trying to add fuel to the fire it's like kind of trolling a little bit because it wasn't like that it's just that it sets a precedent you know if one trainer is going to allow his fighter to go to the brink then you know the next trainer does it the next trainer does it and stuff like that but yo i just text ronnie on a follow-up like yo what up you talk to breland i need that exclusive prayer that hand scoop. emoji prayer hand emojis eyeballs looking at what's coming next tell him tell him we got got tell him we got got last week yo j mac boomerang better service how sound now yeah yo okay i'm good yep yep yeah you sound good all right damn <laughs> yo um, so back to the time yo. so i came after Hello. Yeah, right when we said you good, you just went robotic oh, on us. Is that you on the road, champ? Listen, man, it's all good. You can catch us on the next one because we're coming on immediately. No break. Keem, you avail? Keem is not avail. So y'all might as well just stay there. We going right now live. <laughs> Uh, for our next episode where we're going to be discussing Tank Davis, Floyd Mayweather, Leo Santa Cruz, and the fact that Mayweather is saying he believes this fight with Leo Santa Cruz and Tank Davis is going to do one to two million pay-per-view buys. So that's what we're going to be talking about right here on the Boxing Voice Radio, hashtag TBV Podcast, right here at the youtube.com forward slash the boxing voice 
in one minute, 10.45. So peace. Peace.